What made you wake up? I've been asked that question many times over the last several years and I'm going to address it again now. As I've shared, I was a seeker for, oh gosh, 30 some years, I think. I first received Shaktipat, which is initiation, in a lucid dream in 1989. And then I was thrown into this um, amazing vortex of um, having psychic gifts and abilities just open up in ways that I could never have imagined. So all of that happened. That was kind of the first phase. Um, and then the second phase was having been kind of thrown into doing shadow work you know, looking at the psyche, looking at inherited beliefs, looking at false ideas and old narratives about who I thought I was. So that was quite um, an intense phase. And, you know, through all of that, I was still very much a seeker doing all the practices and working really hard to try and get it, you know, and I just was like, I, I need to get it, I need to get it. Um, and always feeling that I would go through periods when I felt expansive and, you know, very high energetically and in terms of my um, awareness. And then I'd feel like I f I'd fall from that. So there was this kind of movement between the high highs and the low lows. And I wanted the, there to be some sort of consistency. It felt like I needed to take another step. There was a bridge I needed to cross. There was a chasm I needed to leap, leap across, or, or how, however you want to put that. And I started to get frustrated because I didn't know how to get to where I thought I needed to be. Um, so what happened was, after this intense period of searching, and really longing and wanting to know the truth more than anything. One day I just realized that seeking itself was the obstacle. And it wasn't an idea, it wasn't a thought, it was an epiphany. It was this realization that became really clear. And so I just stopped everything, I dropped seeking, I dropped the practices. The only thing I felt led to do was to go into the silence within my being as deeply as I possibly could and just see where, where I, how far I could go. And so that was, if you want to call it a practice, that was the primary practice. Um, and then I don't know how long that lasted for. It may have been six months, it may have been a year, I don't know. But one day when I was on, I was on vacation, staying with a friend and she'd gone off to work and um, so I had some time on my hands and I felt led to go onto Facebook. So I hopped onto Facebook and I saw that Muji was in Rishikesh in India and he was on retreat there and the retreat was going to go live any minute. And I just felt this strong desire to hop on and I was really more interested in seeing, you know, if, if there was kind of scenes of Rishikesh because I'd lived in India before and I loved it. And I really wanted to see what Rishikesh was like. So that was the prime motivation. I'm not a follower of Muji. I'd read a few of his quotes, but I'd never studied with him. I didn't really know anything about him other than, you know, the few little things that I'd seen on social media. But anyway, I hopped on to this live stream and Muji was sitting in his chair in the hall. There were probably two or three hundred people just quietly waiting for Muji to get started. And I had this clear seeing that everyone there was hoping for something from Muji. And I could see that he was seeing everyone as the one self, 
He wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, she's only 25% realised what she's doing here, or, you know, he's almost there, let me help him across. And, you know, he wasn't having any, having any of those thoughts. He was just seeing everybody as the, as the same self. And I recognised that I was seeing through his eyes and I was recognising the self in others. Uh, as the one self, the one in the many and the many in the one. Um, so then what happened was he, Muji started speaking and someone stood up and asked a question. And literally a split second before Muji answered, I heard word for word what Muji said. I knew what Muji was going to say because I'd heard it within my being before he spoke the words. And this happened three or four times. Every single time somebody would st stand up and ask a question and Muji would just reflect for a, a second or two and then he'd start speaking. And I would hear the words within my own being before Muji spoke, sp before Muji spoke them. So I started to see that. I was seeing from the same place that Muji was seeing. I was hearing from the same place that Muji was hearing. And then um, Muji told this story about celestial gems dropping from the sky. And for those people that are really alert and are really paying attention, they feel the wisdom of the truth within their being as a resonance. And I recognized that I had always felt truth as a resonance. And again, I realized I'm feeling from the same place that Muji is feeling. So there was this clear recognition that I was seeing, I was hearing, and I was feeling from the exact same place or state as Muji was. And it was absolutely irrefutable and I recognized in that moment that I'd always seen, heard and felt um, from this one place because I'd had many instances where I'd listened to the uh, words of, you know, Eckhart Tolle or of uh, one of my one of my teachers. Uh, and I had always had these direct experiences of, of, of seeing, hearing and feeling. And then what happened was somebody stood up to ask a question. I cannot remember what the question was, but Muji's answer was recognition of the self is the self. Honour that recognition. And as soon as he said those words, literally, it was as if everything collapsed within my being. And I bowed, I bowed down the kind of ego, the last remnants of the ego that were still there just kind of collapsed and bowed down to the recognition of the one self uh, and the recognition that this one self had always been what was recognizing truth and that the self can only recognize the self or the truth can only recognize the truth and that must be who I am in order to recognize itself, it can only be the self. And this had always been the case because I'd always, always been able to recognize truth when I heard it, when I saw it, and when I felt it. And so essentially that was, that was the end, absolute end of every form of seeking and the recognition of the self which it was like the self sat up and recognized itself or awareness became aware of itself is another way of putting it. So there were a lot of things that happened after that recognition, but uh, the, for two or three days afterwards, I kept, you know, just checking in, is the self always here? Is the self, <laughs> is, is that recognition still here? Is the self still seeing itself? And it was and it has been, and it has never left. It's con it has been constant. 
so that's the story <laughs> although in truth it really isn't a story it's more uh, a dissolution of the stories that were in place prior to the self recognizing itself so I hope that helps those of you who are still seeking uh, what I would say to encourage you is to just just stop and recognize and feel into uh, the resonance when you when you hear truth or when you read truth just go into that place because that place doesn't come and go it's 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 always here and that is the self and that that rec the recognize the recognition of this place is self-realization or enlightenment so, what can I say? <laughs> All right, so sending you much love. Um, as I said, I hope this helps. And we'll talk again soon, maybe. Bye.